Well, welcome to today's talk, Friday the 29th of January. Time goes quick. Um, I'm going to give you the uh, the main points today in case you haven't got time. Now, the, the Novavax uh, vaccine has just announced its data yesterday. And the headline figure there is 89.3% efficacy. So that's looking good. And it's also looking to be highly effective in preventing people getting severe disease, although we don't have the figures on that yet. Another thing that's happened today is the European Medicines Agency has eventually got round to authorising the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, albeit among in uh, fairly controversial circumstances, but we're not going to delve into politics today. Um, now, another day, another vaccine. So, so the Janssen, Johnson & Johnson vaccine today, Friday the 29th of January, uh, has, uh, has published uh, phase three data on its vaccine candidate as well. The overall efficacy there is 66%, which sounds lower overall. But after 28 days, again, it's offering complete protection against severe disease, which really is the important point. So they are the main points today. Um, but of course, there's lots of interesting detail. If you've got time to stick around, please do. I'm going to be here. Uh, so this is the Novavax. Um, now, that's, um, that's their site there where this press release is, and that's the UK government site where we talk about it because um, the UK has got lots of doses of these ordered, so there's quite a lot of uh, excitement uh, about this. Um, now, it's a US company. Uh, the science is from the US uh, and the UK. Um, actually, quite a, lot of, um, quite a lot of UK science in this. It just shows how effectively... Um, and there's other examples of this. The, the, the United States and the United Kingdom science really synergize well together. And um, the, the, the developments in the past year have been really quite impressive. And this is, just, this is just one of them. It just shows what happens when we have transatlantic cooperation. May we have much, much more, please. Part of Operation Warp Speed, so financed by uh, the previous... Uh, well, financed by the US government, organised by the previous um, administration in the States. Um, now, it's an engineered viral protein. So it's a purified protein. So this viral protein here is acting as the antigen. That is what your immune system is recognising as being foreign. That is the antigen. And it's that that stimulates the formation of the antibodies. and all of the other immune cells, such as the T cells and the B cells and some other cells called natural killer cells, quite a few immune cells as well. Um, so it's, it's an engineered viral protein antigen and it's got a plant-based ingredient, which is an adjuvant, an adju adjuvant, which enhances the effect. These adjuvants enhance the effect. And it's plant-based. I'd love to know what it is. Of course, we don't. <laughs> um, um, but because, it, because it's um, uh, an engineered viral protein and this adjuvant greatly enhances the effect of it, you actually need a pretty small amount of, of this uh, engineered viral type protein. And so we can brew or vaccine manufacturers can brew this up in huge amounts because only a very small amount is needed in each vaccine. So interesting implications there for uh, mass production. And um, this picture here is uh, Rebecca, who took part in the trial locally and sent me this picture in. Uh, she's been vaccinated. She doesn't know whether she's had the real uh, vaccine or the placebo. Um, hopefully she'll find out soon. And it's good to see you get a, a goodie bag if you, uh, <laughs> if, if you take part in the... Um, if you take part in the trial, which is always ni nice mementos, I'm sure. Back to the point, where are we? Ah, excellent point, can be stored in a normal fridge. You know, the, 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 the Pfizer BioNTech, we're using it now and we're desperate for it now, but hard to see it going to be used in a year or two's time unless it presu presu turns out to be particularly efficacious because it's so difficult to, to transport. But this you put in a normal call box. Absolutely fantastic. Now, this trial, 15,000 was the participants in the UK, so a good size sample. And over the age of 65, for over 4,000, I think, were over the age of 65. So that's good. That's the code name for the, for the Novavax vaccine. Now, um, 
Top line figure, uh, 89.3%, which is good. Now, it's the first to demonstrate clinical efficacy against the UK variant and the South Africa variant. So this does have efficacy against both of these worrisome variants. The Brazil variant is not mentioned. Now, we assume that the vaccines we're giving out now have efficacy against the UK variant. Well, we're pretty sure about that. And, and efficacy against the South Africa variant. We don't know how much, but we don't have the data. This we have the data. So this is now known. Uh, now, 51% of the phase three participants in the UK, that's 51% of the 15,000 in the UK, actually had the new UK variant. So again, the trial here um, just serendipitously, really, um, ju just fell on the time when... Uh, the UK was uh, becoming less prevalent with the old variant and more prevalent with the new variant. So that means they could actually have two groups. Um, and the efficacy of the uh, vaccine, the Novavax vaccine against the old variant was 95.6%. So right up there with the best of them, excellent. Um, the efficacy against the new variant was a bit less, 80 5.6%. So that was the old variant, 95.6. That was the new variant, 85.6. So it's a bit less, but it's still, this is still good. It's still good. Now that's based out of the 15,000 people that were um, entered into, keep clicking the wrong one today. Of the 15,000 people that entered the trial, 62 actually got the infection. And um, six of those are in the vaccine group. So um, 62 got the infection, 56 in the placebo group got the infection, 6 in the vaccine group got the infection. The difference between those is where we get the 85.6 efficacy rate from. And of the 62 cases, 61 were mild or moderate, one was severe and that was in the placebo group. So although the data is not particularly published, from what we know so far from these 62 cases, it is giving good protection against severe disease, which is what we're really interested in. So look at looking pretty good. Safety interim analysis, um, severe, serious and medically attended adverse events occurred at low levels, balanced between the vaccine and placebo group. So people who required medical attention, it was the same in the vaccine group and the placebo group, which is good. So Clive Dix, chair of the UK Vaccine Task Force, these are spectacular results. So he's pleased, that's good. The efficacy shown against the emergent uh, variant is also extremely encouraging. But it is a bit lower. It is a bit lower. Um, but it doesn't seem to be um, lower against protecting from serious disease. So it looks like th th this Novavax vaccine is going to protect people against severe disease, even if they have the new variant, based on the data we have so far. Of course, we always await more. And of course, this is press release stage at the moment. This is the UK government and press release. We don't have any uh, any um, peer reviewed publications. We don't even have preprint yet, never mind a peer reviewed publication. But we've no reason to assume that they're lying on their press release. So I'm sure this is all accurate. The UK has got 60 million doses coming out in the second half of the year. It's made in the in Teesside in the northeast of England. It's a converted Fujifilm plant. <laughs> Fujifilm plant. Of course, no one buys film anymore because we're all... Actually, that's not true. Some people do still buy film and some people still buy old-fashioned developing paper. But most of us have moved on to digital, so this is excellent. So they've taken this old plant and they've converted it into a vaccine-producing facility. Absolutely fantastic across there in the northeast of England. Company is planning to submit its data to the regulators, of course. So it's over to the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, the HMRA, and the Joint Committee on Vaccinations and Immunisations, JCVI, and they will say yes or no. Um, I strongly suspect they're going to say yes, and I suspect it will be in, well, let, let's say weeks rather than months. I mean, these guys are pretty busy at the moment, to be fair. But I would expect this to be in weeks, so I would expect people to start getting vaccinated with this with this um, Novavax vaccine in, um, oh, stick my neck out, early March. So, some cases in early March, but, but, but bigger rollout much after that. 
no, mid-March probably. It's going to take a bit of time. Um, but um, large-scale production, the second part of the year, so good. Now, 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 this is interesting. South Africa. Uh, there was a South Africa arm of the trial. It's what you call a phase 2B clinical trial, so it's only 4,400 people, but that's not a bad sample size. A 2B clinical trial. Now, approximately, of all the people, of, of this 4,400 people, 92.6% of them had this wretched new South African uh, mutant variant, which seems to be a bit of a problem because it's a triple mutant variant. There's three critical mutations on the receptor binding domain. As you remember, the receptor binding domain is the bit on the spike protein that actually fits into the ACE2 receptor sites on the cell that this virus is going to infect. So these mutations are in just the wrong place. But of course, that's why they're there, because the evolutionary pressure was selected for them, because it means they bind more readily to the ACE2 receptor so the RNA can get in, the viral RNA can get into the cell easier. <sighs> Problem mutation is what it really is. Um, and, and it does seem to be spreading throughout other parts of Africa as well. Um, and as well as as well as the three mutations on the receptor binding domain on the spike protein, there's multiple mutations outside the re receptor binding domain, which means the whole protein sort of flavor of the virus is altered. What we would say is the proteome of the virus is altered, and that alters the antigenic nature of the of the virus. It is an issue. Now, in South Africa. Um, 19% of the population aged 18 to 55, 19% of the population is suffering from a previous pandemic or a current pand another pandemic called uh, HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, which causes acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So it's quite a big question mark in these people who have an impaired immune system, how they're going to respond to the vaccine. And, and I'm afraid it's not looking particularly good great at the moment. So HIV negative people, first of all, in South Africa, that was 94% of the 4,400 were HIV negative. So we see in terms of population um, profile, people that are HIV positive were underrepresented. Um, but anyway, people that are HIV negative, 60% efficacy. And this is because of these mutations on the uh, on the South Africa virus, which is now the most prevalent form. The South Africa mutation is now the most prevalent form in South Africa, and the efficacy for this vaccine went down from 60%. So with, with uh, yeah, it's, 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 quite, it's quite a bit lower really, isn't it? Um, 60%, what were we in? Um, the, the overall head, head, headline figure was, uh, well, against the new variant in the UK, it was 85.6%. Against the old variant, it was 95.6%. So 85.6% efficacy for the UK variant, down to 60% efficacy for the South Africa variant. And that is in people who are HIV negative. Um, one severe case in the placebo group. So again, it looks like it's protecting against severe disease, which is brilliant. The severe case was not in the vaccine group. All of the cases mild or moderate. So all the vaccinated cases mild or moderate. Now, people that are HIV positive, 19% of the population, just under 50% efficacy. So we've got the double whammy there reducing that. Firstly, we've got the HIV. And secondly, we've got the, uh, the South Africa variant. Um, so the South Africa variant... Um, has, uh, has uh, basically mutated and changed quite a bit, so the vaccine isn't recognising it as well. And the immune system in the HIV is not responding as well. So a um, bit disappointing result there for HIV. Now, also about South Africa. Um, a prior infection with COVID-19 may not completely protect sub against subsequent infection by the South African escape variant. Now, as they were going along, that they, they obviously picked up a lot of data as to which, uh, as to people going into the trial, it turned out about a third of the people going into the trial had actually got antibodies, so they'd been previously exposed in what you might want to call the first wave or previous waves of the pandemic in South Africa. 
And, and what they found was that people who'd been infected in what we could call the first wave, pre the South Africa variant, pre the South Africa mutant, they weren't fully protected against the South Africa mutant. So this is, this is remarkably disappointing and it's got implications for, for the world really. It means that people who've been infected once, if there's a big mutation in the virus as there has been in the South Africa case, can potentially get reinfected. They don't involve, they don't have complete immunity. And again, this is new information. We didn't know that. It looks like they're protected against severe disease. Um, but again, this is, this is emerging information. So um, the good news of the vaccine is really uh, th th this slightly discouraging, well, fairly discouraging news has come out with this good news of the vaccine. Uh, but the vaccine adds protection, even if someone's had the previous strain, which is good. And they're working, uh, Novavax is working on a vaccine specifically targeted to the South Africa variant as well. Therefore, I would expect that figure to go up to over 90% with that new formulation of the vaccine. But um, having to go to all the inconvenience of reformulating the vaccine. We really need to stop these new variants spreading round the world. Right, uh, Novavax, United States and Mexico phase three trial, um, not quite as well on, uh, they're saying significant progress. Um, it's called the PREVENT trial and they've recruited 16, they've randomized 16,000 participants so far. They're aiming for 30,000 uh, in February. Now the question is of course, will the American regulators, the US regulators, the FDA accept the European data for United States emergency use authorization. Um, I, I think they should because it's been shown to be safe so far from what we know. The safety profile is looking good, but I suspect they may not. I suspect they may wait for the US data, but... Um, the situation in the United States and Mexico could turn dramatically worse as a result of the new UK variant, which is spreading there at the moment. So anyway, so that's the Novavax. That was yesterday's news. So that, that, that's good news. Now, um, I'm going to do the Janssen and Janssen in a minute. But before we do, I'm just going to um, I'm just going to talk to Penny, who had the Pfizer vaccine yesterday. Thank you, Penny. Hi, I hope everybody's staying safe and well. Um, my name's Penny. Um, I live in Rochester, uh, which is in Kent. Um, the current day is the 28th of January, 2021. Um, I have been shielding for most of the pandemic as I was deemed um, clinically vulnerable. Um, I was offered the uh, Pfizer vaccine, which I received yesterday um, at 5.15 p.m. Um, the shot went absolutely brilliantly. I can't thank the NHS enough. Um, it, it was in and out. Um, it took a matter of seconds and I barely felt it. I had to sit for 15 minutes after to make sure um, I had no adverse effects. Um, the time now is 1.30 um, p.m. Uh, last night, absolutely fine. A little discomfort in my arm. And around 3 a.m. this morning, I was running a slight fever, um, which I just left it to run its course. Um, but today, my arm's quite sore, um, but I've got no other effects, no headache, um, no other symptoms at all. So fingers crossed. Um, I won't display any of it, but I'm <laughs> I'm gonna wait um, to make sure the full 24 hours have passed. Um, I was given a, a sheet of uh, what could happen or how I could feel, um, and told if I need any help to ring 111 and stuff. So, but yeah, hopefully um, all goes well. I've got to wait 12 weeks to be called for the next vaccine um, for the top up. Um, but yeah, looks like we're at the light at the end of the tunnel, guys. So keep safe and well. Thanks. Okay, am I on? Yes, my sound is on. Um, 
So thanks for that, Penny. We appreciate that, and we're going to hear a report from Penny uh, after, after this next after this next part of the vaccine news, uh, as how Penny was uh, today uh, on the 29th. So she's given us an up to date report as well. So thank you for that. Sorry, it took me a while to get your picture on, and I know Penny struggled with the technology, and you you kept with it, and uh, we really appreciate that, Penny. Thank you. Um, now um, today's vaccine news: Janssen, Johnson and Johnson vaccine so that was the first one that we've looked at so far that was the uh the novavax we're now on to that was yesterday's news <laughs> we're now on to the um the janssen johnson and johnson vaccine now it's uh, an adenovirus vector so it works in a different way to the to the novavax which is the purified protein the adenovirus vector is the same as the astrazeneca oxford vaccine isn't it that's how that works and again fridge temperatures now, put your seatbelts on, ready for the spectacular news on this one. It requires one dose. Fridge temperatures, one dose. Absolutely brilliant. Massive implications for rollout. And by the way, both of these vaccines are quite reasonably priced. Now, I didn't get a price on the, um, I didn't get a price on the Novavax one. I think it's under ten dollars though, around about seven pounds. I think I'll, I'll, I'll correct that later. And again, the 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 Janssen Johnson and Johnson one is is reasonably priced. So these are coming in cheaper than the Moderna and cheaper than the Pfizer BioNTech. A bit more expensive than the Oxford uh, AstraZeneca, um, but not a lot. Um, now th this phase three trial is called the Ensemble trial, published today, 29th of January. Globally, it's recruited 43,000 people. Wow, great sample size. Of those, 468 developed symptomatic infections. Now, efficacy in preventing disease, 66% overall efficacy in preventing disease. The United States, 72% uh, efficacy. Latin America, 66%. South Africa, 57%. Now, I think we can see quite clearly that the South Africa variant, um, it's not working as well against the South Africa variant unfortunately and the latin american one could be the brazilian variant there that's causing problems and uh, the united states well again there could be part of the problem from the uk variant there but we don't know that so slightly different efficacies in different areas but all highly usable and that's 28 days post vaccination uh, onset of protection was observed as early as day 14 and remember this is after a this is after a, a single dose, after a single dose. I'm very keen not to get my vaccines mixed up today. I think we're doing okay so far. Um, so, um, still on the, uh, let's get this right. Still on the yeah, Janssen, Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Um, so globally, the efficacy was uh, 85%, they're saying. So um, efficacy in preventing disease, 66 percent overall prevent, preventing disease, efficacy in preventing severe disease at uh, 28 days, 85 percent. So the first so th that those first figures there were preventing disease, symptomatic disease. This is preventing severe disease, which, of course, really is the main thing. And they're quoting their 85 percent. Now, I'm going to qualify that in a minute because it's actually better than that. Well, it's not. It is that because that's what they're saying. But that kind of belies what I'm about to tell you. But this, this, is, this is what's really important, preventing se severe disease. And I've said many times, I don't mind getting a little bit sick. Um, that happens in life, but I don't want to get very sick. I don't want to be hospitalised and I don't want to die. So it's protection against the severe forms that's important. Now, while they're saying 85% there, and this is just on a press release, so it's a bit difficult to tell. But what they do say is it demonstrates complete protection against COVID-related hospitalizations and deaths 28 days post-vaccination. So there they're saying 85% protection globally, but here basically they're saying 100%, aren't they? So um, clarification required on that, because but that's what the press release is saying. But these words are saying that after 28 days, people aren't getting very sick. And they... Um, Stress that in all adults 18 years and older, efficacy against severe disease increases over time with no cases in vaccinated participants reported after day 49. Right, so what they're saying here basically is that after 28 days, no one gets very sick. And after 49 degrees, the immunity is increased. 
efficacy against severe disease increases over time. So they're saying it's complete there, but they're saying it increases over time there. Now, this is just a press release, so we can't extrapolate too much from it. But this is all sounding pretty good to me. It is slightly contradictory the way it's written. That's the way the press release is. Of course, read the press release for yourself. That's the, that's the link for it there. Just, just click on it. But it's looking like after 28 days and certainly after 49 days, people aren't getting hospitalised and uh, getting sick and not dying, which is what we really are pleased to hear from the Janssen, Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Um, now, protection, uh, generally consistent across age groups, including older adults over 60 years of age, of which they had 13,000, and that is a good sample size. So that's good, um, including South Africa, where nearly all the cases are the... Uh, the, uh, the this horrible... Well, this has got different names now, B1135. That's what they're now calling this new South African variant. So giving uh, protection against severe disease from the South African variant is looking promising. We'll be able to be much more precise on that when we get the, um, the, the, the full publication on it. But looking good so far. Safety data assessed by independent group of experts did not report any significant concerns. Vaccine candidate was generally well tolerated. 9% uh, of participants got fever. Um, which is okay, it just means the immune system's working. And um, the, we looked at data recently. Um, that indicates if you've had a vaccine, if you can avoid taking antipyretics, medicines like acetaminophen, paracetamol, and ibuprofen, if you can avoid those in the days after taking the vaccine when you're making the immune response, the immune response may well be better. Now, the vaccine manufacturers don't actually comment on that. Um, so it, it would be good to hear their, their comment on that at some point. If they watch the video, I'm sure they'll reply in no time. Right, overall serious adverse events uh, reported were higher in the placebo group than in the... So the placebo group actually got more severe, uh, uh, more adverse events. So looking like the people in the control group and the, the control group getting the placebo and the experimental group getting the vaccine, have the same number of side effects. No anaphylaxis was observed. Good. Um, rollout. Um, now, this is a not-for-profit one. So um, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is excellent. Now, th this is actually... Uh, yeah, anyway, it's not-for-profit, which, which is great. Um, UK has ordered 30 million doses. It's been produced in eight plants in seven countries. So again, we're waiting for the Medicines Healthcare Regulatory Authority and the FDA in the States and the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunity to give us the, uh, the go ahead on that. Um, and I really don't have a timeline for that. Um, but uh, again, we would be hoping that this is, uh, I really don't know, I really don't know. I would hope it's weeks rather than months, but we really don't know on that one. We don't really know where we're going. This has only been published today. So bang up to date. Now, uh, let's listen to Penny's report from today. If I can get the technology right this time, um, Penny. Hi, I just thought I'd give you an update. Today is Friday the 29th of January uh, 2021. Um, I received my Pfizer vaccine um, on the 27th um, at 5.15 p.m. Um, all day yesterday I was fine. Um, it was slightly sore where the shot site was. Um, around 3 p.m. yesterday afternoon uh, I started to feel quite tired. Um, I had a headache and slight muscle pain. Um, I didn't take anything for it. I just let it run its course. Um, I seem to be fine or getting better over the course of the evening. Um, and after getting up this morning, I'm, there's no side effects at all. Um, just where the shot site is just a little bit tender. Other than that, everything is fine. Uh, hope you're all staying safe and well. And thanks for listening. Um, hi, I just thought I'd give you an update. Today is Friday. Am I back on? Yes, I'm back on, right? 
the, the complication here is I've got to change from the sound from the computer onto the sound for me and I sometimes get mixed up. Right, Penny, excellent. Thank you for that. Uh, Penny had the uh, the Pfizer uh, BioNTech, uh, the, the, the Pfizer vaccine. So um, good to see that you're feeling so much better. And of course, Penny's behaviour will stay the same in terms of um, not transmitting disease, but, but we know that her... Uh, immunity will be gradually building up now and uh, she's going to be protected against severe disease but not fully protected until she has the second vaccine at some point in the future so um great Th thank you for that report penny um great to hear from you and th there's no substitute for the understanding the human um the human experience and all of this which you've grateful to given us okay so that is us for today lots more things i could have said today there's all sorts of unpleasantries going on really we'll maybe mention some of those tomorrow and the data from the uk um isn't brilliant actually the the, the rate of declining cases is really very gradual we've got new data released today but more on that tomorrow um for now it's looking very promising with these two new vaccines, the data is looking good. Um, from what I know now, I will be happy to have either of them. Um, <laughs> just you know, it's quite a way to get vaccinated, basically. But there you go. Thank you for watching.